right, this is the Committee on Legislative Affairs and Elections. This is Monday, March 21st, 2016. We're at 6 p.m. Uh, Councilor Napolitano. Here. Uh, Councilor Matuski. Here. Uh, Councilor DePiro. Here. We have three members present. We do have a quorum. If we could stand and salute the flag. Clerk, read item number one. All right, the first piece of business. This is one is stopped by Council Healing. This is for the double utility pole replacement or for removal. Thank you. Uh, would the sponsor please uh, come up, give us a uh, idea of what he's looking to do today on item number one? Yeah, one is for double pole locations. Anyway, Mr. Chairman, uh, on, on both of these, you know the plagues of, of, of double poles we've had in the city for more than 20 years, more than 30 years probably, you know? Um, and we have all seen poles that have been up for so long that the, the newer poles are getting to look exactly like the older poles. So the fact of the matter is that they're just not taking them down once they remove them. And the, we can call the people in here, the electric company, as many times as we want, and they're going to give us the same exact answer. We take them down because we have to, and we tell the other renters that are on the poles that they have to take their things down and never come and take them down. So the fact is that if we have an electric company, they transfer their wires, and the telephone company does not and neither does the fiber optics company, and neither does the cable company, and neither does whoever else is renting those things, and I don't know who says they can or they can't stay there, but I know that the telephone company supposed, I mean the electric company supposedly orders them to do with it. There are some poles in the city, a very few poles in the cities that are jointly owned poles. They're owned by the electric company and the telephone company. And wouldn't you know it's funny that the telephone company takes their lines off of those poles, but they don't take them off the line, the poles in which they're just renters. So um, we need to do something about that. I, I saw the most ridiculous thing just two days ago, and it was on um, Valley Street. And there's a double pole there, but as we know, what we know a double pole is it runs up in the bottom. This pole was only eight foot tall, and it was in the middle of the pole up at the top, it was just hanging off to the side. And there were still wires attached to that piece of wood. And that, that's a crazy, I've never seen one like that, but go down and take a look at it. It's right at the, uh, in the middle of, of uh, Valley Street. So the purpose of this then is to give these people, uh, once they tell us that they're gonna, because they have to ask if they can remove a pole, we say, yeah, sure, you can remove the pole, but all of your renters have to be notified, and all of your renters have to get a, um, uh, a notice that this job is gonna be done, and that they have to have a signed document given to the phone, given to the electric company, before we can tell the electric company that they can take, move the pole, that will allow that other company to 60 days to remove their wires. If not, they get fined 100 bucks a day, or whatever the fine will turn out to be. And I think that's the right thing. And I think that they're going to go out and change it because you know it's 700 dollars a week, because each day is a separate offense. You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that this is something that we have to do, and we have to get them moving. Now, when I wrote this, I I, I figured that this would be a good thing to do, but I never thought of what happens with the existing poles. So that's the other piece, and the other piece talks about uh, uh, removing ex the, um, the double pole in an existing situation, not one that's coming up. So we would give them a, a certain number of days also to go out and tell these people that they have to do it, or are we going to, we're going to find them? Right. And if that's the only way we can do it. Um, Council, if I could ask you, sure. to close it. if I could ask the uh, clerk to read item number two, oh, seeing okay. as how they're, they're in conjunction. Or I, actually, I take that back. I'll entertain a motion to take item number two. Make a motion to take item two. Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number two. This is what is up by Council Hill. This is for the removal of double utility poles. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that we're talking about right. two pieces that we're, we have both items on, on, on the agenda right now. So this first piece, uh, we are going to if we pass this, we're going to allow 
the other companies, uh, once the, the electric company is finished, uh, 60 days to remove their wires off the pole. Once those things are removed, then the uh, electric company has no choice but to say, okay, we have to take the pole down because there's nothing on it. There's nothing to hold them up. And then the other one is, um, uh, I don't, do you have a copy of one? And uh, so we'll give a reasonable length of time for the removal of the double pole situation, such as 30 or 40 days, and that I'm leaving up to the committee to do. Um, uh, they shall have no more than 45 days to remove said pole. And I think this is all just positive stuff. And you know, we're not, this is not the only, once I, I've, I've, I've I put these on, which I wanted to do for many, many months and everything, uh, I started looking around. I see that other towns in, in Massachusetts, other municipalities are doing this. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was even in the Beacon uh, magazine that we get from the MMA, uh, there was one town that had already gone ahead and, 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 and processed and made this their, the law of their, their land. So uh, that's what I'm looking for now to get these two things established so we can finally get rid of these double poles that are located all throughout the city. And there's a lot of them. It's not like five or six poles. There's like 60 or 70 of them. So they're all over the place, and they should come down. They shouldn't be allowed to stay there all that time. So with that, that's what I'm looking for. Councilman Matuski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I noticed that it's 30 or 40 days you want us to make a recommendation on that tonight. Should it be uh, 40 days? I, it seems like any length of time they don't do anything anyway, but and who is going to police this? The city uh, electrician, the building department, uh, what actual department from the city will issue fines? Code enforcement, maybe? That's what I was cur curious about. And uh, to identify if there's 70 poles, we can start with the 70 that are up and notify uh, the electric and cable that it's unacceptable. Other cities and towns do have a law against it. Everett's a little behind. We've try to deal with these people over the years, and it just, uh, at the last meeting I brought up uh, Hosmer Street, 13 years is a little long, mm -hmm. you know, to be looking at it from your front porch, but um, maybe, uh, I just want to uh, find out who's gonna enforce it and issue the fines and, uh, and how many days actual do we give them to actually remove it. So. Councilor Allen, do you have an answer? I, no, I don't. And if you know it's something that you could probably want to add on to this, that would be the code enforcement that do that. But any ordinance of the city of Everett is enforceable by the mayor of the city. And so he would probably just, you know, pass it on down to another department. And code enforcement would be a good place to start. So if you want to if you want to add that to it, it's okay. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. <coughs> I mean, I think this is a great uh, from the chair, if I could, I, I think this is a great plan. I mean, um, you know, Brought up Mr. Cameron's name at, at, our, at the at the meeting, uh, Councilman Tuski, and you know we have we've had sent him notices last session, repeatedly over the last two years. Even he was even up here one time. Nothing, nothing happened. So I'm I'm not sure he is anymore the end all. But we definitely need to get find a way to get this problem resolved. Um, does anybody have any questions for the city solicitor or anyone else in here that can make anything? That, maybe provide some insight for us before we start working on an ordinance here? Well, maybe we should ask, is it legal? I mean, you know, if, if we could have this, the, the attorney, uh, you know, if we're gonna enforce something through our various offices. Could, could the city solicitor please come for us? For the record. Good evening, is. Colleen Mejia, city solicitor. Um, there's currently a statute um, with regard to double poles, and the, the statute gives um, the owner of the pole 90 days from installation of the new pole to remove the old pole. But there's an amendment to that statute pending in the legislature right now, allowing cities and towns to enact ordinances prohibiting double poles um, beyond the 90 days, and any violation of that ordinance um, could be punishable by a fine not to exceed $1,000. So, is that a one-time fine, or is that a is that a collect per occurrence? So, 
I don't know if there's further language that talks about, you know, every day is a new occurrence. That's usually how they word it. Um, but it doesn't say that specifically in this bill. I can give you um, the members of the committee the current ordinate um, statute in the pending amendment and you can, you know, you can. This is the state legislature? Yeah. This was? Yeah, it was filed in January of 2015. Okay. What was your date on file? Uh, it was filed on um, January 15th, 2015. I can give this to you, Council Hamlin. No, that's okay. Oh, that would be nice too. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions for the city solicitor? Uh, just one question to the chair, to Attorney Mahia. So the, the state law supersedes the city law. The, the, a, a city can enact an ordinance <clears throat> that is um, stricter, more restrictive than the state law. We can't be more uh, liberal. Than the, than the statute. So you can, <clears throat> I haven't had an opportunity, I just picked this up tonight, this ordinance, I, I, I hadn't seen it before, so I can certainly review it and give you some feedback if you like. Um, well, my but it seems as though in the summary that Councilor Hanlon had given um, verbally seems to be fine. It seems fine, okay. But I, I'd like to just kind of review it more carefully. If Councilor Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my only concern is that, you know, where this was filed on 115.15, mm -hmm. we're now a year past that date, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering how much longer that the state government would, would spend on this. Are we still going to be here on 115.17 looking for the same thing to be done? Yeah. And uh, I'm concerned where we got, we got two good ordinances here, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll wait for you to pass judgment on those, but um, that we could put into effect now instead of waiting for another year or maybe two years or depending on mm -hmm. their record, mm -hmm. maybe five years. Well, and if this and if the if the amendment in the state legislature ever gets passed, you can just um, amend your ordinance to increase your fine from one hundred to one thousand dollars. But the one thousand dollars is per infraction, right? It says per occurrence. Yeah. But a lot of times, an occurrence is um, a, 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 every day is a new occurrence. Oh, that, if that says that, that's fine. Yeah, it doesn't specifically say that in this amendment. Um, but we, you know, I can, I can continue to track this and Catherine Rollins from the mayor's office was the one who provided this to me um, you know so we can coordinate and track it and see yeah, no, the where it goes. Today sounds, sounds good you know if it was a thousand dollars flat if you if you think about it mm -hmm. to remove a double pole uh, that has nothing on it no wires on it or anything mm -hmm. you need one or two trucks you need four men uh, and whatever however long that's going to take it's probably going to cost them a thousand dollars at least mm -hmm. to remove that pole or maybe more and if the fine is only $1,000 one time, <coughs> why remove the pole? And you can... Um, $1,000 a day, I'm sure they're going to jump yeah. right on it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. And I think you if, you, you, if you'd like, you can refer to Section 1-8 for the fines, and you can go up to $300 um, for, the, for the ticket, and it's each occurrence per day. So you do 25 50 I think it's 100 right. yeah. 300 and then it could be 300 300 300 for every day after that. I mean, that might give them incentive okay. over the hundred dollars. I mean, it's something to consider. Any other questions? Yeah. What I would make a recommendation from the chair is that uh, we you know, we pass these two pieces on to the city solicitor for her re to review, uh, and then make comparatives to what the state is working on. Uh, if we can be more restrictive, so a thousand dollars flat is maybe a thousand dollars flat plus a daily fee fine well and currently we're not allowed to impose fines um, of a thousand dollars i think maximum under the state legislature is um 300 unless there's something that's passed that gives the city you know something over the 300 which this would if it was passed but we could do a daily type of fee. you could do up to 300 right now daily yep okay all right so if i can get a motion so a motion to refer this to, 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 to the city to look at it and come back to us? Yes. Uh, I mean, come back to your committee? Not me. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to refer both of these pieces to the city solicitor. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So moved. Okay. Click a read item number three. Right, item number three, 
This is a resolution up by Council Pangan and Council McLaughlin. That the Everett City Council objects to the delay in the wind project. And respectfully ask some of Mayor Joseph Curtitoni to consider dropping his appeal of the Chapter 91 license mm -hmm. so that the project can move forward and construction can begin. Councilman DePere. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, Councilman Mangan was unable to attend tonight, but he did ask me to speak in favor of this piece. And the fact of the matter is, Mayor Curtitoni's stance in Somerville is, is very hypocritical, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of many others in Everett. Uh, he's under the impression that Mr. Wynn has had it too easy in Massachusetts, as if anyone's paid attention since late 2012, we know that has not been the case. Assembly Row is expected to generate 31,000 cars per day, almost the same amount number as Wynn. Assembly Row has put forward $19 million in traffic improvements, where Wynn has put forward $262 million. And Assembly Row was using $127 million of public funds, whereas Wynn is using none. Also, zero for the Mystic River cleanup, where Wynn is using $30 million for the site, the river, and so on. So I would recommend that we take favorable action on this piece tonight. I know we have to draft some kind of format for the letter, and um, I hope he drops his appeal very soon. Thank you. Councilman Matuski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I agree with Councilman DePiro. Uh, some of us have been really uh, unfair to the city of Everett. We are neighbors. Uh, Revere um, lost the casino and uh, we got it, and uh, which was the right thing to do. We're cleaning up contaminated property, a brownfield, a known brownfield, which the state is trying to get rid of and identify these, these uh, useless pieces of property. And here we're going to have a resort casino. Somerville has really come a long way. Uh, I happen to go in back of Costco, that little walkway that's there. You can see all the activity at nighttime. It looks technical. And the, the, they're building a brand new Marriott Hotel right across the water. They've got all kinds of exciting things happen. And Somerville, now, why the mayor of Somerville would be uh, taking this position when Wynn has done every environmental. Uh, challenge that was a asked them by the state and the gaming commission and to finally at the end what a real kick to us to do this to the city of everett and uh you know i i talked to some friends that live in somerville and uh, i do have a friend on the somerville city council and uh he, he in no way was in favor of this uh this being uh, uh with the appeals that uh, mayor Curatoni is uh came up with so I know that this says uh, looking to the entire City Council to petition the Somerville mayor I'd also like to include uh, the Somerville City Council uh, on this um, to let them know that the Everett City Council is disappointed with their uh, with their mayor uh, taking the stance against the city's uh, future so can I add that to uh, the uh, the, res uh, the request here? Second. Does, does Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Was there anything else, Councilman? No, I think that's about it. I, I would, from the chair, if I could, I, I think that this is a great idea, and I think including our colleagues in the city, Somerville City Council is important. I think we also need to CC uh, the wind group so they're aware of where our stand is. And we also need to CC the governor. The governor's been very vocal about his, his feeling on regarding uh, this delay and how it's affecting the state and the local area. So let's make sure that uh, our governor is aware that we're our feelings as well, you know, for whatever you know, weight that might ad additionally add to his, all, his interests. Now, will this be done in a, in a um, proclamation type of a, a letter? Uh, who's actually gonna draft this? I believe it's done. It, it, my understanding is that it goes to the clerk's office. Uh, let's City clerk. If we could yeah. invite him up to just get his feedback, uh, if you'd like. If not, then we would just refer it to him. Oh, he can just nod his head. Mr. Could I ask him from uh, here, uh, Mr. Clerk? Will you be drafting this letter to the the mayor of Somerville? Yes. Thank you, Clerk Matarazzo. 
Does we, any of the members have a draft or any of the sponsors submit some type of draft? Not that I'm aware of, Mr. Chairman. But it's self-explanatory, really. But I, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, look, can I amend this to add, or does it have to be amended? We just want to add the governor. Include in the correspondence the governor. And, and I the, think the uh, Gaming Commission should know that. The uh, Commission and the win people. And, and the win uh, principals. And, I, you know, I did bring up at the last meeting, and maybe I was a little lengthy, and I do apologize for that, but... Uh, you know, as a city father, we, sh you know, anything that happens with wind, this is like, a, I've got 35 years invested in the city government here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I plan on sticking around for a few more years. I don't want to get secondhand information, people asking me, why wasn't I invited to a certain event? Who is actually handling wind's affairs in this city as we speak? I believe the administration is. There's a depart there's a let uh, because it seems to me that certain councilmen know everything that's going on and uh, I don't know I haven't got a clue as to what's going on and every day I hear if I don't get 10 people ask me every day is the casino really coming you know I want to be invited to ground breakings okay ribbon cuttings whatever you want to call it union activity I want to be invited to everything as a city father now, if I'm not on the, uh, you know, I know I wasn't, a, a, I voted for the casino, but I'm not on the uh, a Citizens United, Everett United group, um, but I, I, I'm 100% in favor of the group. However, I don't want to feel like an unwanted guest when I show up at an event, okay, like I felt at that uh, union rally, okay? I happen to be a member of the union and a councilman and a former state representative. I want to be invited. And it seems to me that there's a little favoritism. I know that maybe one councilman was employed for a short period of time by him. I want to be invited to every event that's, if I may not go. Are you aware of tomorrow night's event? No, I'm not. What's okay. tomorrow night? Because we did receive emails from the, the wind people. Emails, there you uh, go. I'll, uh, I'll go over that. that. That went out to every city council. I'll, I'll go over that with you uh, at the end of the meeting. Uh, but there is a meeting, there is a, uh, an event tomorrow night to present the models and answer any questions. And where is that? People. It's going to be at uh, Station Landing. Okay, and um, actually, I'll get to you. I mean, there is a, uh, such a thing as a phone call. You know, I, I love emails and all the computer stuff, okay? But whatever happened to picking up a phone and calling somebody? There's only 11 council members here. I mean, really, station landing tomorrow night. It's at their headquarters. Um, in Medford, see. which I don't I'll, know where I'll that is. I'll give you the information right now. Yeah. Well, uh, this is what I'm talking about, Mr. Chairman. Now, you knew about it, and I'm to Councilman DePiro. Well, I got, I got the email today. Oh, today. Yeah, what a great notice, huh? Less than 24-hour notice. And, you know, I, 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 I ran back and forth from the State House to all these hearings, the convention center, the uh, Armory, the, the Conley Center, rather. Actually, and is your email address? No, I haven't got an email address. Okay, because there, there was an email that was sent out. Again, I'll share that information with you off. Well, Ms. McCory uh, okay. has been handling some of my City Hall uh, internet right. stuff. So. I will, I'll, I'll share the information with you privately, because again, it was a meeting intended, it's a meeting intended for us as, as City Councilors to get uh, first-hand information and I don't believe it's open to the public, so I don't want to present that information out. I see, yeah. Attract well, this is what I'm yeah. talking about, Mr. Chairman. I think you uh, inadvertently hit on it. Uh, it's called communication. Yep. This is a $2 billion project. We're city fathers. I've been involved a long time, and I don't leave the house without somebody asking me what's happening with the casino. Is it coming? Is it not coming? The vet, I can tell you this. The, a lot of people are disappointed with the mayor of Somerville, I can tell you that much. Well, and I, I guess it's costing 50, it's going to cost, ending up costing $55 million a month by this delay. So with that being said, you know, and I don't want to slight anybody. I'm a, I've been pro-casino since this started, but I want to know what's going on. Simple as that. But I do support this uh, request uh, to send in a mayor of Somerville and... Uh, uh, right. And uh, so, we want to make sure we add the governor, the gaming commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, gaming commission rather, and who else? DEP. Uh, DEP. The DEP. They handle the appeal. 
of the chapter 91 what? license and such. And second his motion. Okay. And anybody else, Mr. Chairman, you think? We have so we, we're we're gonna. I think maybe. Uh, how about the mayor of Malden? He's actually been very supportive. Uh, mayor well, Christensen. Think, the thing is that you know again, keep in mind this this is a non-binding, you know, piece. All right. So you know, I think getting it out to the principals, and then also we can get a copy out to the local you know local there press. There we go. Okay, that's you know, fine. And that way, there that 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 purpose will then be. And it also has to be amended. Uh, to strike out the sponsors and put the entire Everett City Council. Yeah, I believe we passed that motion. Well, that's the amendment. way I want it to appear rather than uh, the two uh, come to Everett City. Right. It's a foregone conclusion that uh, the entire city government wants it, so mm -hmm. it's not fair to, uh, if you're going to put everybody's name on it, well, that's fine. Not the Everett City Council. That's another thing. Could we have that? Mr. Matarazzo's left the room, but. Uh, could our clerk of committees add uh, each name of every uh, councilman to that, rather than saying the Everett City Council? Each name? Depends how we type it out. Uh, Mr. Matarazzo, to the chair, uh, we are requesting that you, uh, when you do this let's, request. Let's do this right. Uh, can I entertain a motion to have Mr. Matarazzo come up for us? I'd like to uh, have a city clerk before us, Mr. Chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mike Matarazzo, City Clerk. Uh, thank Council you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Matara uh, Mr. Clerk, rather, uh, when you do draft this letter, we'd like to have each name of every councilman, rather than the entire, it just sounds cheesy. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, we've also requested that you send a copy to the governor, the gaming commissioner, and uh, the wind. and the wind group and the wind group yes mm -hmm. no problem and the local newspapers mm -hmm. as well and the local newspapers very good there's not going to be any problem with that I guess that's under control unless you have any questions no anybody else have questions for the clerk no excuse customer thanks all right so we have uh, we just need a motion to send it to the clerk's office. Motion to send to the clerk's office. Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay. Before the clerk reads uh, item number four, I have a uh, an announcement to make. Um, actually, uh, uh, Lieutenant Fire Lieutenant Jeff Jenkinson uh, passed away. Uh, a long Everett employee. And a long personal friend, and um, you know the wake is going to be held on Wednesday, March 23rd, at Rocco's Funeral Home between four and eight. Okay, um, I will again. I would hope that we have a good attendance from the city. Jeff spent a lot of years, uh, you know, working hard for the city, and it's up to the city. You know, it's on us to show that appreciation. Uh, 58. Younger than me, so uh, right. Uh, so I again, just want to make a note of that. Uh, if the clerk could read number item number four, please. <coughs> item number four. Uh, this order uh, by Council Hanlon, uh, as president, that the City Council of the City of Everett hereby accepts Chapter Fifty One, mm. Section Sixteen A of the Massachusetts General Laws, creating an election commission. Would the sponsor please come? Is the sponsor in the house? Councilman Hamlin? Mike, are you in the house? Yes, can you speak in the house? Councilman Hamlin? Right. This regarding the election commission. Yes. Could you give us some information on what we need to accomplish? Well, um, that was uh, sponsored as president, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Uh, but I can give you information, you know, being down there and knowing exactly what's going on. Um, you know, the clerk's office is, is capable of doing what we're, what we're doing currently, but you know, when we talk about what the state is expecting us to do in the future, it's, it's really tough and they're not going to be able to handle it, especially with their workforce today. We have, for instance, um, 10 days before the election, you're going to be able to vote over the counter. Uh, that's everybody in the city just comes in and votes when they want to vote. We don't know now, do we have to have a different precinct or we could be in one precinct? Could it all be in, in downstairs in the clerk's office? Or do we have to have a, a, like a room like uh, the, the hearing room C, you know, or maybe this room or someplace where they would come and vote? Are they going to be, because there's no privacy in the clerk's office. I mean, we could put a booth for them, but what if happens if five or six people come in at the same time? Ten days before the election is a long thing, you know, so. Uh, the registration we're all gonna, also going to have now uh, in the, in the, um, registration of voters, which happens down in the clerk's office, is that people can now come in and register up to the day of the election and vote that same time. That's going to be very difficult to do for an office that's got so much work that they're doing right now. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have really a chance to read all of this, you know, but I know that we've been, you know, for years and years and years, we've, we've been running the, uh, the elections. We had, at one time, we did have a uh, election commission and we, we did away with it. Uh, but now with the other work that's coming on uh, and the work that's going to be done by the city clerk's office, it's just too much to ask of one person. Uh, I would think if you want, we should actually get the clerk to come up here and, and answer some of these questions um, because he knows a lot more about it. Things have changed since I've been there. Uh, things have changed since this item went in. And yes, I do remember putting this in. But um, I would really like to have the city clerk come up and, and get, get him up to do some things. If you, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to invite the city clerk up. If you think of what, what the we clerk the does, you know, it's the please. preparation, dismantling of the polling locations, uh, actually conducting the election, maintaining the campaign finance reports, which he'll do, which is which all, all that we, what we do, um, distributing, administrating, uh, uh, administering nomination papers, Preparing ballots, uh, staffing the polling locations, which is like over 100 people that you have to put to work for that for that day. Uh, we don't know how many people are going to have to put to work if we actually have the elections for 10 days before the uh, voting, 10 days before the election. Uh, and testing and, and uh, you know, all the voting machines have to be tested now and, and so forth. Uh, it's just a lot, a lot of work to do. And to expect the clerk's office just to continue merrily rolling along with, with all the other stuff that's coming down from the state, especially the new, uh, what do we do, the new uh, document requesting, requesting documents now, the new, new th um, law that the state has put through. In other words, that we had time before that we could give, you know, somebody wanted to have 100 copies of something. Well, you have to do that as long as they're willing to pay for it. But you also have to have the time to do it. If that was to come in on a nice slow day, maybe you could do it. Comes in during elections, you can't do it. That's we're already in violation of the state law before it even starts, and we know we're going to be in violation. So you need to do some sort of um, easing up of the load that's down the clerk's office. And the way to do it is just to do an election commission and let them do an, a lot of the, an awful lot of this stuff themselves, have their own department now, like it was before. If I could, before I, I give, uh, hit up the next councilman, I, I would like the, sit, the uh, clerk of committees to give us an overview of how this was handled before. I was just informed this is actually came before legislative affairs on the last session. None of us were members of the last group, so for us this is new, but I don't want to delay it. I understand the importance and the significance of, of being able to create a, a, a structure that's going to alleviate some of the burden off the uh, city clerk's office uh, and to be able to get this this make this process work. So if, the, uh, if I could ask the clerk, can you just give us an overview of what transpired before the last session and why th this is before us? Actually, what I could do is I could give it be, I could get caught up and read some reports. Okay. All right, so we're good, we'll get copies of the reports from the last. Yeah. The Basically, last we just days. ran out of time. Right. And, that, and rather than start from scratch and go mm -hmm. over things, I would like to review what, what's been done, right. what had been done before so we can work a little quicker on this. So. If I may, Mr. There's a, there's a whole other side to that too, and that is, you know, elections are very important and they deserve a lot more attention than what uh, I believe I'm able to give them because once the election's over, I'm back to being clerk and doing uh, the day-to-day -day things that we need to be doing. Uh, you'll see in this, just a few bullet points that I put here, I'm, 
it seems like every time the legislature passes a law, there's a new thing for the clerk to do that goes with it. From open meeting law to uh, public information law to uh, conflict of interest. For some reason, I'm responsible to making sure that every city employee takes a conflict of interest test every two years. That's, I mean, that's a lot of people. You gotta make sure they take it and all this. But the elections deserve more attention. I mean, things like promoting that the election's coming and uh, uh, registration drives and things like that, those things fall by the wayside. And I, I just, uh, so it's, it's not just an added thing for, for the clerk, it's also that that's not getting the attention that it really, really, really deserves to try to increase voter turnout uh, and, and, and things like that. And, and so it's, it's, it's double. On that point too, I also want to point out that you know, years ago, the registrar voters used to actually drive around the city with the trailer. And they would have typewriters in there and so forth, so you could go register on those spots, something, we, something that we don't do anymore. You know, but that, that was done, and we, we did that all the time, you know. They used to hold seminars for people to come along, and that was done also, too, and, and they just, they're just not around to do that anymore. So that's, like Mike says, some of those things fall by the wayside because you don't have time to do it. Something like that's kind of important. If you really want to get people to come out and vote, show them that, you know, this, this trailer went, it stopped in front of, uh, how long ago it was? It stopped in front of Piano Dosi's Bakery. <laughs> All right, so that's how long ago it was. And they stopped down in Glendale Square. They taught, stopped in the Springs. They stopped down by the uh, Pope John. It wasn't Pope John at the time. But they, they stopped all over these places. And these things are gone now. We don't, we don't have that anymore. We should have that. We should have that. Councilman DePauw. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to echo the sentiments of uh, the city clerk and, and former clerk Hamlin and our council president. Uh, we're all involved in elections. We know how stressful they can be just being the candidate. Uh, imagine what it's like on the other side. And I do believe these elections deserve more attention, not a knock on, on anyone, but it's just the, the reality of it that one individual in an office can only do so much. And you know, essentially their, their name and credibility is on the line to ensure that elections are open, transparent, and, and fair here in the city and Everett. And I think this commission is very needed and I'm fully in support of it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do remember those register the vote trucks too. Yeah. Like John Brilly does. Remember Margaret Mitten and mm -hmm. they'd park in various corners and you'd go and they walk up the stairs. I remember the truck, but I, I whatever happened to it, who knows? But we also just passed some laws uh, that you can register to vote. Uh, I know that the, the, I've actually voted for it, but uh, there was a lot of things in that new voter bill. Could yes. you explain what they are? Well, the, the main part of it, it's a, the same day registration hasn't passed yet, but now 16 and 17 year olds can vote ahead, I mean, can register ahead of time, and then you keep them on the rolls and just don't let them vote until they're of age. Uh, but the other thing, the biggest thing on there was the early voting. Um, we just got the regulations literally two hours ago, and it's only in draft form at this time on how that's supposed to run. So I haven't had a chance to look at those yet. Um, the, so th that was on there. And the other thing was um, audits of elections. Certain communities will be chosen, and almost like a recount, they'll automatically do like a recount on it. It increased the training which is done by my office, the training of the poll workers, um, which in itself is amazing. I mean, because these folks don't do this for a living. They do it, you know, once a year, twice a year. Um, and uh, we actually have one of the younger poll worker crews. The average age in America is 71 years old. And there aren't people beating down the doors to go work 13 hour a day for $130. And and we're one of the highest paid, by the way. Believe it or not, at $130, we're one of the highest paid in, in, in the country. Not in the country, I'm sorry, in the Commonwealth. Uh, so that's, those were the main things that, that were in it. The only real problem is the early voting. I mean, the early voting, I understand the concept and I understand you know, why they want to do it and everything, but uh, it's basically, I mean, we're gonna have to it, it just extends the whole election season. In the back of this, I put a sort of typical local election activities. This is what happens in a local election. And what happens is you, 
as clerk, you stop doing everything other than the minutes of the meetings. You stop doing everything and your full attention is on the election. That would be wonderful if that could be done, but it can't be. There's requests from the city council to do this. Uh, various officers coming in and asking you to look up a deed from 18, who knows what. And, um, and, and that's your job, and that's my job. I mean, I'm not, certainly not complaining about that, and it's, it's your job. They need to get old information, and you're the one that's gotta go get it for them. Um, so you can't shut down the office just to do an election. Uh, anyone who's ever been in the office knows people are always coming in and out. Who needs a birth certificate? Who needs a death certificate? Who needs a correction to a, a, a vital record? Uh, it's, it's a constant flow in there. And meanwhile, you're trying to put together, meanwhile, you're trying not to make any mistakes. You wanna make sure the right voting list goes in the right bag and the, and uh, it is, it's, I came in, my, my favorite story is I was lying in bed and I, it was uh, three o'clock in the morning and a thought just hit me that I had spelt Dave Rodriguez's name wrong on the ballot. And all of a sudden my wife turned around and saw me standing and getting dressed and she goes, you're not. I said, yeah. And I got up and I came into City Hall and I opened the vault and I looked at the ballot and fortunately his name was spelled correctly. I went back home and went to bed. <laughs> but I couldn't sleep because I would never have been able to print those again. They were five days away, and I know I read it a hundred times, but it doesn't matter. You have one chance to do it right that day and that day only. Um, another real quick one, uh, election night, election morning, three o'clock in the morning again. I don't know what it is, but three o'clock. I wanted to see how well the city services building lit up because it was the first time we were voting there. I went down parked there to see how dark or lit it was. Went to get back in my car and my battery was dead. So I was down at city services at three o'clock in the morning. Fortunately had my cell phone and called Quayley to come and jump in my car for me. It's those things, you, you can't do it over again. And to have it really fall, even with a great staff and everybody doing their job and doing the, the absolute best they can, the ultimate responsibility falls on a single individual for that one day. And you can't, there's no redo. There's just no redo. And uh, uh, myself and the assistant clerk, and I were out with city services putting the boots up. In the old days, there were no boots. You just pushed out that machine. Now some of the boots are getting worn. Which ones do I want? Which ones don't I want? Will this one fall down when somebody goes and votes on it because it's a little wobbly down? By Take that one down, we'll go back to the office, get another one, you know, because I have extras now. And you're testing the machines a week ahead of time. You have to run this particular election. We had to run 50 Democrat, 50 Republican, uh, 10 or five, five um, United Independent five Party and five Green Rainbow through every machine after allowing them to uh, charge overnight. There are bags after you set up. A provisional ballot bag has all this little paperwork in that you make sure everybody gets. And I mean, so the amount of work that goes into it is 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 amazing. Even taking care of a supply bag. Do they have red pens? Do they uh, do they have enough pens? The markers for the thing. Do they have a? It's an awful lot of work that goes into it while you're trying to run a customer service type of business where people are coming in and out and serving the needs of the city council and requests from, from the rest of the office. You know, a lot of research as well. Everything stops. Everything has to stop un until, until you're done with that. You know, until you're done with it, there's nothing you can do but concentrate on the election. Those other things have to wait. And if something comes in with a deadline, it just makes it even worse. But if you look through this, I think this will give you a good indication of, uh, of what happened. Then really quickly, the very next morning, you're there taking down the equipment with the, you know, the guys, the city workers start at uh, seven. I'm at, and this time I had uh, the assistant clerk with me, but 
It used to be just me. I'd be at the Kaverian School taking those boots down by myself. I just wanted the thing over with. But I'd go there myself and take them down, undo the tables, put the machine away, because it has to be, uh, you just wanted it over and go home and go to sleep. <laughs> okay. So this first step of this is accepting is a chapter 51? Right, once it's accepted, it's a fact, and then I'd have to turn over the stuff to everything. Uh, Right now, there are, there is one vacancy on the registrar of voters, and then the creation of an election commission will create a second vacancy, being mine. I will no longer be on a registrar of voters. Um, that means he'll, his honor the mayor would appoint one Republican, one, uh, one Democrat. The only thing that's going to be difficult, and, and, and I openly admit it, is finding that Billy Hart type of person to be the chair. Because these people are gonna have to be available during election season. They have to be available uh, at least the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They're gonna have to be available to, for testing the machinery. Um, that's gonna be the hard part, is finding that chair, that, that person that will really take the reins and do it, and do it. And uh, having been someone who's had to do that, it, it's not easy. Uh, I think it'll be easy if it's all you do. If that's your only responsibility, I think that, uh, I think it's doable. And the registrar of voters used to be a separate office anyhow, as you all know. Uh, we took that on when they were short-staffed. We were very, cordial and saying, why don't you come down, we'll help you, you can help us. And as they say, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> so, I mean, it just added to it. Um, but they've got a good day-to-day -day staff and they will do what they do now. Keep up the voting list, do the census. Um, you know, register voters, except that they now become employees of the election commission. And that commission has to be a lot stronger than what a registrar of voters has been in the past. You're gonna need some really quality people. From the chair, how many, there are right, right now two people involved yes. with registrar of voters? Yep. And what will their roles be in this new structure? Exactly what they're doing now. The, their day-to-day -day role wouldn't change. It's what they do now. They register voters, they take care of the, uh, the uh, street listing. Uh, they do the nomination papers. All we do is take, all we do is certify that you got enough signatures. They actually look at each signature and, and, and determine it. Uh, they'll do recounts, which registrar voters is responsible for recounts. Um, a lot of the things that are credited to me, not a lot, but things that are credited to me that they think are my response was actually the registrar voters. Certifying the sig, not certifying, but yeah, certifying the individual signatures and uh, the the city census, or the request for voters list and things like that. That all still stays with them. So there's there's plenty for them to do on a day to day basis. Okay. Does anyone have any further questions? I do. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to make sure I'm clear with what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I and I have to say that you do a great job, I really do. Well, thank you, Council. I mean, you, you know, I've known your activities in Everett for many years. You are quite an individual, you're an historian, just a great guy all around, but, and I know your office has been uh, quite busy, you know, with the change in complexion of Everett, especially with the casino coming in. There's a lot of activities going on, and. Uh, but uh, I just want to mention just a couple of things. Now, the Ward 6, Precinct 2, uh, I happen to visit every precinct uh, as often as possible on Election Day or Primary Day. You know, I, I just want to suggest to you, I, I don't know how quickly this is going to happen, but uh, the parking down there is very uh, difficult. You know, and it, it, it really, if the employees could just kind of like uh, move their cars so that the people could vote, I, I saw people going around the block three times, and then there's a one-way street. You can't take a left. You got to go around the, the the rock salt pile in the back. I mean, come on, you know that has to be straightened out. That's an absolute perfect 
uh, description of, of the very thing I'm talking about. Uh, with an election commission, that's what they do. That's all they do. And so that's the type of thing. We did have signs, and I used them the last election. Um, I noticed them in the back of my car at the, I don't know, 7 o'clock. But we put them in that front area near the grass. I didn't put them there this time. Well, that was just a point of information. But, but it shows you that kind of a thing. All right, so there's going to be a board, mm -hmm. and one person, the chairman, will actually do the things that you're talking about. I think the chairman should be the one who runs it. They all should be taking part in all of it. Now, there's got to be compensation, because this is quite a bit of work. Uh, who actually, are you going to do the, uh, how's the interview process work? Uh, that all be through his honor, the mayor. The and the salary, would, I think, would be set with the approval of the, of the city council, and the, and the members would be approved by the city council as well, just like any other appointment, just like the registrar voters. I do agree that this isn't a $1,200 a year board. I agree, especially the chair. So the chair would be responsible for all of these things that, we, that we've you've listed here that you presently do uh, along with the registrar mm -hmm. voters' office and would they have an office here at City Hall, too? I would think so. I would think well, so, Well, that yes. would be the appropriate yeah. place, right. They would probably still use my vault because there's only a couple. And things do have to be secured. Well, that person, you know, I know that politics in Everett is very difficult. Uh, oh, yeah. In certain elections. It's a hard, hardball city. But that's the way it is, so. And I certainly wouldn't run away. I mean, I'd be showing them the whole thing and, 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 and helping them get well, up. This person would have to be very impartial. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, you couldn't, uh, this is a very serious, you know, you are a trusted person in this community. Uh, John Hanlon, when he was a city clerk, same thing for him. Uh, Paul Ellard used to be a very active and Kevin Dunn. I mean, there hasn't been many city clerks that I yeah. recall. But uh, it's got to be somebody that uh, really has to take that oath and, uh, Somebody that we can trust, you know, I, I. And that would be the responsibility of the council when, the, when a nominee comes before, before the, uh, the councilors to make sure it's somebody that, but not only that, you know, in Revere, when the person who appointed them, appointed the election commission, filed for a recount, according to the law, he, they didn't believe that he filed it properly and they didn't even act on it because to them it wasn't filed properly. And that was the guy that appointed them. They're gonna go by the state law. Any kind of thing like that is in the public eye But at they did have a times. recount review. He went to court. He went to in the but court. But he had to go to the court rule that he could, but, but that was the guy that appointed them. But according to the law, they did follow the law and they felt that he didn't. Uh, and uh, they didn't Well, you know, I re now that you bring that up, I remember one instance, Mr. Chairman, uh, there was a Ward 2 council race, and um, they declared the, uh, the winner I'm to be somebody. They had a recount, and I was actually at the recount, and uh, they transformed, I think I'm using the right, they transformed, the, uh, instead of 61, they said 16 on a particular machine. Yeah, I remember that. And I was there, and the certain party that actually won, I said to that party, I said, uh, they read 16, they didn't read 16. She goes, no, look at the machine. And I saw the 61. I said, that's not what the, uh, what the person said. So needless to say, at the end of the, the whole recount, that one machine was read wrong. We did have to go to court yep. in Cambridge. Uh, I was actually a witness for her. And she ended up winning by 42 votes legitimately. It wasn't, you know, and, and you know, the problem starts, Mr. Chairman, was when you when you're actually there and you, you, you know, you want to help a friend out. Uh, and there was people scratching, well, you're friends with the person and uh, they had a recount. That person spent $1,500 for a lawyer. <laughs> and the, you know, and she never was reimbursed. You know, and I, I thought that was so unfair. And uh, this is what, that's the only time I think I can remember of a, a, something negative, but somebody, and John Hanlon was the city clerk, and uh, he actually told us w exactly what to do, but it, you know, these kind of problems, that's the only one that I c can remember offhand right now, but that's pretty scary. Yeah. 
to win an election, having it taken away from you, and you act, and, and they're, they're letting the other candidate sit. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. But uh, that, that was an instance where, again, the law had to be followed, they couldn't recount a recount. Right. The recount happens and it's determined and it's closed, now you have to go to court. And that's what happened like in Revere, everywhere else, you, they follow the law, any kind of, any kind of thing like that, it's always in the public eye. And uh, I don't think people are gonna risk, you know, uh, their livelihoods or whatever by, you know, I think whoever gets appointed will do the very, very best that they can. It's just gonna be difficult finding that, that caliber, that top caliber person. And I can't help it. I just keep calling it a Billy High so, type of. So you won't be doing the training anymore. No, but I'll be helping them to get going. Because you do a great job. I actually know a few of the poll workers, Mr. Chairman, and they are wonderful people. I don't know how they can do the 13 hours, but you know they take the little break in between. But they do work very hard. And the best thing that uh, that you developed was uh, uh, reducing the precincts from 18 to 12. Which works, I mean, some people, well, why don't I vote across the street? Well, hello, <laughs> you gotta vote at the library, unfortunately. But you know, I mean, those things do happen. But um, if you think it's necessary, and uh, this has been, uh, I know it was in the last city council. We ran out of time. Yeah. I ran out of time, right. No, I, I could see if somebody's gonna do the right thing, uh, I, you know, that's the trust thing that I have. Yep. You know, and uh, I trust our city clerk. <laughs> and I trust our register of voters. And uh, this person has to really, of course it's a criminal offense to do anything, even if you mock up a uh, uh, nomination papers. You know, it says right in the bottom, uh, anything to do with elections if you uh, do something illegal, uh, you, you can go to jail. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to see that, because uh, I like the way you handle things, to be honest with you. I've had good success with you. Councilman, do you, do you have any other questions for uh, City Clerk or Councilman Hamlin? Oh, I, I, what's the process uh, before they leave? Uh, what are, you know, uh, where, where, we where would, are we if here? We, if we agree to proceed, we just need a motion to accept uh, Chapter 51 uh, with a positive recommendation to the City Council. I move to accept Chapter 51 with a positive recommendation. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Chain a motion to motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We've adjourned. <laughs>